Hello, fellow ham radio enthusiasts, to the talk introducing ham PC. My name is Dave Slaughter, call sign W3DJS, and I am located in Gwinnett County, Georgia, about 20 to 25 miles northeast of Atlanta, give or take. Uh, today, I'm introducing you all to HamPC, which is the sister project to HamPy. And uh, basically, they are both the same sort of project, just for different computer platforms. So when you are aware that HamPy is a free, open source, award-winning ham radio software suite for the Raspberry Pi, HamPC is basically the same thing uh, for the x86-based personal computer, whether it's a desktop or a laptop, does not matter. And so HamPC is a bootable disk image that you can load onto a USB flash drive or even onto the internal uh, hard drive of your PC laptop or desktop computer. And it includes over 100 ham radio software applications installed. And uh, just to give you a little bit of an idea of what is included in a ham PC, I figure I will show you a couple of different applications running. Now, just like HamPy, uh, we have a menu on the upper left-hand corner, uh, which is the Applications menu. And under that, you can select Ham Radio, and under that is all, are all of the different applications that a ham PC consists of. Uh, just to start out, I'm going to show you the About Ham PC which is a little bit of a leftover from the About HamPy because the support URL for HamPC is actually HamPC and not, and not Ham-Pi. Uh, but these are clickable links in the About box. So if you want to go to the uh, uh, support URL, all I do is click on it once like I just did. And what will happen is uh, the built-in web browser, Firefox, will load up and it will pop up the HamPy uh, support group. Now, all you have to do is just hit delete three times and uh, type in PC and you will go to the ham PC support group. Uh, this little issue will be fixed in the next release of ham PC. Uh, these support groups have all sorts of members with different capabilities. You have people that are beginners, you have people that are experts, and then you have a bunch of intermediate people that are familiar with ham PC to different degrees. And this is a good place to ask for technical support re with regards to ham PC or the applications contained within. So uh, you have both ham PC and ham Pi support groups on groups.io. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, close this up now and close up the about box. But you can always bring up the about box to see what version of ham PC you are running. So let's go ahead and try some of the different applications on HamPC. Once again, I'm going underneath the Ham Radio menu. And the first thing I'm going to do is bring up a, a propagation program, which is going to look very familiar to some of you. Uh, this is the uh, sun weather that show you, shows what bands are open and closed at a particular uh, point of time during the day. And uh, right now it's showing that you've got fair conditions uh, on 40 to 80 meters at nighttime and, and as well as 20 to 30 meters and so forth and so on. So uh, I'm demoing this uh, ham PC, by the way, on a very commonly popular desktop right now, or I'm sorry, laptop computer uh, called the Evolve 3 Maestro. And I picked up one of these for about $60 plus tax uh, from a local computer retailer uh, called Micro Center. And uh, this seems to be all the range, all the rage right now as far as laptops go. So uh, if Ham PC can run on this very basic $60 laptop, it should be able to run just fine on more modern computers as well as older computers. And uh, like I said, I just purchased this uh, within the last uh, uh, few weeks. And uh, as I'm recording this, it's the beginning of September. Uh, so I picked this up in August of uh, 2022. Now let's see what other programs we can run on HamPC. I'm going to go underneath the Applications menu and underneath uh, Ham Radio. 
And let's see if we can't uh, do something here for people that might be doing satellite communications. Uh, to support satellite users, we have a program called gpredict. And you can start that up. And what it does is displays a map of uh, uh, the world plus along, it's got like a sample spot. And I think that the author is probably from that particular location in Europe where the spot's at. Uh, one of the things, first things you should do with gpredict is go underneath the edit menu and then select update TLE data from network. Uh, this is going to bring all the latest information on satellites and uh, store them in the program so that there's more predictable information about where all the satellites are. And I'm going to go ahead and click close on that. And you see that some of these have moved to position a little bit after we got updated data from the network. So uh, gpredict is uh, uh, able to give you all sorts of information on things like the ISS. And I'm going to click on I'm going to click on the ISS, and uh, I'm going to get some. There, the the ISS is considered a satellite, even though it's of course the International Space Station, and we get all this different data as far as where the exact position is, and then you can click under the transponders tab. And even though it says no transponders, uh, I do believe it actually has three. So anyway, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close up gpredict and move on to the next application in the HAM PC software suite. Uh, a lot of things that a lot of uh, things that HAMs like to do are are, for example, making contacts uh, with FT8. So for that, I'm going to launch WSJTX. And this is the uh, this is the uh, most recent um, application version that's been released as far as a stable release 2.5.4. I understand as of the time of this recording, a 2.6 uh, version is under development. So I'm going to go under um, mode and make sure we have FT8 selected. And then under file settings, I'm going to go ahead and set some basic things such as my call sign, whiskey three, Delta Juliet Sierra. My grid is echo Mike 83. And I'm going to turn on a couple of settings here, which I like to use. And then we're going to go to audio and I'm going to select the audio input here and for this, I'm going to have also underscore input for the sound card input. And this says USB Burr Brown from TI USB audio codec. Uh, the ICOM and Yesu and, and other types of modern radios that have audio over USB look very similar to this. And uh, again, I'm going to click on the output and I'm going to select also underscore output. And I have to scroll down to get to that. And again, it's USB Burr Brown from TI USB audio codec. And so I've got that. And then I'm going to kick back to the radio menu. And I'm going to select under rig. I have an ICOM IC7300. And I'm communicating with that at 19200 baud. The rest of these things are okay here. My, cat, my uh, PTT method is via cat control. And then mode is going to be data packet and split operation is fake it. And then to confirm everything is correct, I'm going to click under test cat button. And I don't know if you heard that in the background, but that was the uh, relays uh, clicking uh, in the radio. And now I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And uh, now that we have the audio selected, we're going to see if we start uh, showing some different contacts on 20 meters. So I'm going to go to the wide graph here. And yeah, we are showing that we're getting some communications in. So let's see what starts to show up here. Oh, okay. So I have uh, a single contact on 20 meters. Maybe I'm going to switch bands to a, a band that's a little bit more active. So let me go ahead and uh, switch over to uh, 17, 17 meters. Oh, okay. There's a contact we can try to reach out to. So I'm going to call out to uh, Kilo Foxtrot Zero Juliet X-Ray India and uh, see if I'm able to make an FTA contact uh, with this individual. So um, this is a demo. This is not pre. This is this is not 
pre-recorded and edited out and so forth. I don't know if this QSO is going to go through or not. Uh, we're just going to have to try and see what happens here. Uh, it looks like they're uh, calling again, so they may not have heard us or we may not have uh, called early enough for them. So we'll give it another try through this uh, uh, second call to them. And then we get to uh, wait and see if they have heard us. Uh, right now, I do have the uh, power level. Uh, normally, I would run the power level at uh, 50 watts for FT8. And I do recommend running with 50 watts or lower. Okay, they are not hearing us. So I would, I'm going to go ahead and call a different call sign, November Yankee 3 Hotel. Uh, but I was having a little difficulty reaching some international sites the other day. So I actually bumped up the power to 75. But uh, I'm going to bump it back down to 50 after this uh, so that I'm not running with extra power to the radio. I don't want to burn the radio out, so to speak. Uh, that gets very expensive having to, having to uh, have radio serviced. So let's see if NY3H hears us. And they did. So um, they responded back um, with our signal report of negative 07. And um, we're letting them know that they're uh, negative 19. And we will see if they come back with either an RRR or an RR73. And we'll be able to log the QSO. So uh, just a note here that uh, WSJTX, you, okay, they came back with RR73, and that particular case, I can go ahead and uh, log the QSO here. I'm gonna put down power 75 watts. And uh, operator W3DJS. And uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click okay, and the uh, QSO has been logged. So uh, as you can see, uh, WSJTX is running just fine. Uh, this also shows that the underlying ham lib, uh, which is the abstraction layer for ham radios connected to computers, are both working okay. So I'm going to leave this, I'm going to leave this running in the background for right now. It's using up uh, a little bit. Oh, there's, I can't pass up a, POTA, a chance to connect with somebody via POTA here. So I'm going to call out to them even though I called a little bit late and uh, see if we can't get through to them. But I'm gonna give you a little demonstration of that we can have multiple, more than one thing running on the, uh, on the uh, Evolve 3 PC here. So I'm gonna go underneath the ham radio menu once again, and I'm gonna select under software defined radios, uh, a program that I happen to like very much called Cubic SDR. And Cubic SDR does use a lot of processing power. Now, uh, with Cubic SDR, it did not see my SDR play the first time around. And if that happens, simply uh, click on the refresh button and it will rescan again uh, for the devices that are hooked into it. And in this particular case, the second time around, it is finally seeing my SDR play. And I'm going to go ahead and click start for that. And then I'm going to tell it to look at 99.7. FM. And uh, now you can see we are uh, receiving uh, an FM broadcast signal. I do not have uh, sound available on this particular laptop due to it being such a new laptop and the audio drivers are, are just not available yet for this version of Linux. Uh, when they do become available, uh, you can be assured Ham PC will include those for this uh, newer laptop. But anyway, uh, as you can see here, we've got Cubic SDR running, and we're also running WSJTX, which I will bring to the foreground. And that POTA station does not seem to be able to hear us, and that's okay. That's that just happens sometimes during these demos. But um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close out of Cubic SDR, and I'm going to go ahead and close out of WSJTX and give you a little bit of an idea of some of the different things that are available under the ham radio menu. Uh, just like HamPi, we have antenna analyzer applications. We have APRS applications. And, and if I click on Zaster, it's gonna take a little while because it's a big program to uh, load up. Uh, but we'll, we'll, it will pop up 
and I'm going to put in W3 DJS and I do not know my latitude and longitude off the uh, top of my head so I'm just going to let it sit here um, on the equator uh, and zoom in a little bit and you see Zaster is running here but it doesn't get interesting unless we actually turn on stations uh, so I'm going to go underneath uh, uh, station I'm sorry interface and uh, interface control and I'm going to go ahead and add uh, internet server capabilities and it's going to want a passcode uh, for my call sign which I have to actually look up <laughs> passcode is 13211 of course, uh, there's a gentleman's agreement out there that we do not use um, other people's uh, call signs and passcodes on APRS. And I'm going to go ahead and click on OK here and select it and click Start. And it is now up and running and it's going to go ahead and start getting information. Um, now what I want to do is move, I actually want to go ahead and move the uh, uh, coordinates uh, so we can get proper uh, data for this. So let's go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead to uh, go to uh, Google Maps here. And I'm just going to go ahead and plug in any particular address here uh, that's nearby and to get their, um, uh, get their, get their, um, uh, get their latitude and longitude. And it looks like I have some on the other screen here. So let me go ahead and select File, Configure, Station. Okay. So north coordinates are 33. And I'm going to get as close as I can here, approximately, let's say uh, 50 minutes. And then I'm going to do, we have West, so I don't have to make this negative. That's going to be 83 and probably about uh, 87 minutes West. And let's see if this puts me close enough uh, in Georgia. Uh, to where I'm at. So clicking on OK that on the first try. So let's go ahead under interface and turn off our interface and turn it back on again. And uh, close. Let's go ahead and quit out of Zaster and restart it again to see if it updates our location uh, from near Africa to actually along the United States. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And underneath the Applications menu, I'm going to click under Ham Radio and APRS and select Zaster. And let's see if it shows our correct location this time when it comes up. Okay, so it has us, it has us updated. And I'm trying to zoom in on our location. And then again, you can see all these different all these different stations are populating around the area that I'm in. So let's see if we can zoom in a little bit closer to Atlanta. And we have all these different station reports which are coming up via internet. Uh, Zaster also talks to the radio, and you can also get position reports from. Uh, what is it, 144.390 megahertz uh, in the U.S.? There are different frequencies, of course, for different regions in the world. But uh, that is that is Zaster running. Um, advanced usage of Zaster is really up to the individual to learn. Uh, what HamPC does is it provides the software and lets you run it. So anyway, this has been an overview of the different things that are available 
on ham PC. Uh, you can see this is very much the same as what you've got as, as what HamPi does. Uh, again, if you go back to the ham radio menu, we've already talked about antenna analyzer, APRS. Uh, we have antenna calculators here. We have the entire suite of FL Digi applications from Dave, W1HKJ. So that's available there. Uh, we have a whole slew of logging applications. We have applications that support CW. We have some PSK specific applications. We've already been under the software defined radio menu here and we ran Cubic SDR, but you also have things like Qt SDR, GQRX, and SDR++, which seems to be a very new and popular software defined radio application. We have some older but still useful training applications and then uh, weak signal applications of which we already ran WSJTX, but we also have GS8 call available as well. Uh, you've seen we've uh, run CQR prop. Uh, we have other things available like free digital voice. Uh, we ran GPredict. Uh, we have ham clock, which I'm gonna go ahead and start up right now just to show off really quickly. I'm going to click to enter the setup screen because I did not enter my call sign correctly last time. And I'm going to do go ahead and select geolocate and click done. So now it has my call sign with a capitalized S and it is currently getting the most accurate clock data it can since it is of course ham clock. And once it's done here, it's going to go ahead and uh, tell we have a new version. We could update it and the update should work just fine. I've done this before, but for the demo to go smoothly, I don't want you sitting there watching paint dry while it updates. Uh, in this particular case, you can see our location is here in the southeastern United States. Uh, here is approximately the sun's position overhead for me. And then we see the daylight night, nighttime terminator right here. And uh, we see that Europe, uh, Africa, Asia are, and most of uh, Australia are in the dark right now. Uh, New Zealand has light now. So, um, Anyway, this I wanted to just give you an understanding of what ham PC is, and basically ham PC is ham pi just runs on the PC instead. Um, we've got more we've got more programs here underneath the menu, and uh, don't forget, even though we have all these applications underneath the GUI menu, there are a number of applications which run under the console only, and uh, for more information about those, I suggest you go to the ham pi wiki. Uh, which is under the GitHub page for, for uh, HamPy and HamPC. So that's it for this demonstration and talk. Uh, again, my name is Dave Slaughter, W3DJS, and I would like to dedicate this to my two sons, Andrew and Daniel Slaughter, whom I have not been in communication with for nine years. And I do want to say that HamPC is dedicated uh, to those people uh, who have suffered through the family court system. And I know this is a, a difficult topic and a lot of people don't like to talk about it, uh, but there is a document on, on the desktop here called Give Back. And what it does is it talks about my story and the father's rights movement and also Americans for Equal Shared Parenting. And if you want to ensure 50-50 access to parents for all children, uh, I would, I would recommend donating $5 or more to one or both of these uh, charities. Again, they're Americans for Equal Shared Parenting and the Father's Rights Movement. Uh, they are not only for fathers, these are for non-custodial parents, which is a term that the family courts have invented to substitute for the actual name, which is visitor. And I don't believe parents should be called visitors. Uh, a child needs both parents. They don't need a parent and a visitor or even worse, having one parent uh, cut completely out of their lives. Anyway, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, 73 to all of you. I'll be uh, available for questions here after this talk.